Oh man, setting up the camera is always a pain, especially that I want to hide how messy my room actually is. Hey guys, it's Pochard here. It's 4.30 in the morning, great time to make a YouTube video. First of all, great news. I got my art products into Amazon and they are live and purchasable. But there's not too many inventory on there. The way Amazon works is that they only give you very limited slots and you have to prove to them that these items are sellable before they give you more space in their warehouse and so on. Um, you can find more information in the description with a discount code. It's not too much, 10% off, but it's in perpetuity. But it's in pepper. Pe pe <laughs> give me a sec for this. <sighs> Perpetuity. Originally for this video, I was going to make a follow along art video, but then I realized I would be using my pencil, which is relatively new in style, and uh, it's probably better if a few people that want it actually get their hands on it before I start making a follow along video. And it will actually improve your drawing skills. If you choose to buy the product and you like it, all I ask that you just go and give it a rating. So get it, enjoy it, use the use discount code forever and uh, feel free to give me also suggestions. Okay, so let me quickly walk you through how I drew this from the latest Batman movie in an hour. Alright, so if you're still here, I assume you like drawing and likes art, so I will just be blabbering um, about whatever comes to mind. Okay, I'm proud to say that I'll be using my own brand of charcoal pencil and paper for this drawing. There's a misprint there, it's not 50 pages, it's, it's actually 60 per pad, and for the price, you get two of them. And if you like any of my products, just give them a rating. It is pretty important for Amazon if the products are successful. I will be able to offer you guys much greater discounts in the future as well as um, new lines of uh, art supplies at a much higher quality and the most cost-effective price. So I'll be drawing Catwoman from uh, the latest Batman movie starring Robert Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz I believe. Just a quick word about the movie because I'm a movie buff. It's often compared to Christopher Nolan's uh, Dark Knight with the Joker. And I believe as a Batman movie, it's probably at least on par or even better because that one was almost like a Joker's movie. Heath Ledger's Joker kind of overshined over everything else. And, and this movie is much more Batman. You guys know what I mean. All right, uh, for the drawing itself, I, I just tear the page of my sketchbook. It has two sides. One is slightly rougher, one is slightly smoother. Honestly, you can use whichever you like. These pencils are so soft, they will work with pretty much any joint service. And for those of you who are interested in how that works, charcoal pencils is made out of, of course, charcoal and the quality of the charcoal dust, but also binding agent. To put this in the simplest terms, right? So depending on the ratio of the binding agent and charcoal, that determines roughly how soft it is and how dark it is. And generally speaking, the greater tone range, the better the contrast and the more appealing the image. There's a reason most art schools, fine art schools, use charcoal and its many forms as the main art tool. So the overall process is not unlike what I described in my previous two videos regarding the ratios and the, uh, you know, the, the philosophy of approach. But what makes this drawing a bit more, well actually quite a bit more challenging is that it has to look like a somebody, right? It has to look like a celebrity. And that makes it a lot more difficult. I, in fact, this is actually my second attempt. Uh, the first one I can, I have here somewhere, I might show you guys, but it's not very, it's not quite as, I don't think it's quite as good as this version. And also the the hands, I know it's, it, may not seem like a big deal but like the hands is almost like another face in terms of difficulty uh, there's a lot of subtlety to do with it that it's very easy to screw it up so that it looks off in fact i probably could still do a better job if i were to repeat this again i can i can probably I, and i probably should it's been a while since i diligently practice all the time right so I start out with very very loose and light lines just kind of map out where the shadows and light areas are I feel like the background is warranted in this case because I really want to you kind of need that to contrast with the highlights and the lighting of uh, her face and hair 
the light shadows and the light eyes and everything else is basically what I have always done from before based on ratios. It's just I gotta be a lot more careful now because I'm drawing a particular person that's recognizable. So every step becomes much more important to get the early on to get the ratios right and later on to get the details correct as well as the tone value correct. That's just a given. It is actually much easier to focus on the large structure first as always and you shouldn't need that much detail honestly to make to sense whether the joint looks like a particular person or not. At this point if I feel like the ratios are off I would just stop or fix but because I feel like I could mess with the uh, eyes and the nose in a particular shape of the nose and so on um, to look like the person I just kept going because honestly at this point I'm still not 100% sure if this is gonna turn out as well as I would like it to be. I spent quite a bit of time tweaking the eyes and uh, you can see it in the joint actually as I, especially with the first eye because if for the first eye I start to look like the person I, I'm much more confident regarding proceeding with the rest of the features but if the first eye if I couldn't get it right or I don't feel like I can get it right it, it it's a problem and here's another problem is sometimes the first eye even if you draw it very accurately it can still not look correctly because it requires other features to come together for that image to look like a particular person so even if the first eye doesn't look right sometimes it's right you know <laughs> like you don't know for sure until you at least complete few other features to really know whether it is like like uh, wrong or right. I mean, it's. I hope you know what I mean. I think sometimes it's very easy to tell based on the feature itself whether it is going the correct direction or not. And sometimes you need a few other parts to be completed to be able to tell if it's uh, going the right way. And this one, I I spent quite a bit of time. Remember, I remember I spent quite a bit of time just like fixing from le our point of view the left eye. And I keep thinking, oh god, it, am I screwing this up again? It doesn't look like her, it doesn't look like her, but let me just finish the rest of the drawing and see what happens. And so I'm glad I did, because in the end it kind of looked like her. So it's one of those things that just like, oh, even with my relatively, you know, slightly above average experience with drawing portraits, sometimes I cannot uh, be completely sure until I finish certain parts. When the eye that's in the shadow start coming in, now I can see, okay, I need to tweak this, I need to tweak that. I'm much more sure of the drawing is going, you know, somewhat in the right direction. Of course, I'm never happy with my drawings. I always think it could be better, but some you, you got to, as, as, you know, at some point, you just got to stop. Many years ago, when I first did the uh, Emma Watson portrait, it took me four, four, four to five tries. And even though the previous joints, they all look, I would say, okay. Just because that little bit of difference that I think could be better, I just keep, I keep like tearing up the old joints and doing new joints. It's, <laughs> it's I, I think a lot of artists can probably relate to this this point. Um, the nose is very important. When you, when you start making sure a joint has to look like somebody, suddenly every tiny little details regarding the face becomes really important. Uh, the nose, the shape of the nose, which is shaped by not just the uh, X or Y the proportion, but also the shade, which determines you know how deep something goes and how how much it recedes and comes towards you. That becomes just as important because that determines the shape of the nose and the and shape of the nose bridge, whether it is sharp, whether it whatever it is. So everything becomes that much more important and suddenly you cannot make mistakes in any dimension. You cannot make mistakes in the dimension of X and Y which is really just the proportion. And then you cannot make mistakes in the dimension of uh, tone value which is kind of like Z axis how much something uh, recedes from the viewer versus advance towards the viewer that you try to creating this optical illusion for because really realistic drawing like this is really just creating an optical illusion of a, a 3D form on a 2D surface and using values to create that the illusion of depth. Everything else is in support of that. This is not a rule that applies 100% of the times but for black and white joints it applies I would say you know 98% of the times depends on lighting and so on. 
I didn't want to place too much details on the hands, nor did I want to draw too much details on the uh, like the hair. I kind of want to just make sure the eyes are correct, the eyebrows and nose and lips. The primary goal is to kind of capture that look, that kind of stare. It's got to look like there is life behind those eyes. Because I'm doing demonstration, I, I put a little bit more effort into make sure everything's kind of rendered. But uh, artistically, I would say it's fine if I draw everything else much more loosely or even just with a few lines. Because there's not much point in make sure everything is treated the exact same way as I have mentioned before. Because if you are treating everything equally, it, it is likely to become an exercise in technicality rather than artistic expression. Now, this is not obviously a hard rule or anything, art is subjective, but you know, I hope you kind of get what I'm saying. And this applies mostly to a beginner to intermediate level. Overall, I think this is a okay demonstration of the basics of realism. There is a lot more stuff we can talk about once you know everybody understand realism to a very proficient degree which is not hard we can talk about variation of style the variation of edges the lost and found edges maybe you can you have heard about this before and uh, the contrast not just of value but of uh, detail level and the contrast of uh, style like there's a lot of stuff that and of course composition is a big one too composition of the entire image um, those are all very interesting topics but the basics you got to be able to cover which is really just two things right proportion and tone value once you are um, you know once you cover those two basics you can pretty much draw anything observationally and eventually with a lot of practice maybe conceptually as realistically as you want to it's just a matter of spending more time on details but that's like learning how to type i mean just because you can type on the keyboard anything you like and you can type for as long as you like uh, doesn't mean that you can write a good book you know <laughs> and of course this is subjective again and back to our typing analogy people often confuse long story as it means definitely that it's a good story when and that's not necessarily the case of course it could be long and good it could be long and bad it could be short and good it could be short and bad so take that as you will but one thing that is pretty much guaranteed is that as you get better at art and as you get more exposed to a, a great variety of art as your own skill improve you, your assessment of uh, any artwork is just gonna constantly change and evolve and shift not because the artwork you're looking at is changing but because your understanding and your perception is changing but a solid foundation of realism should be the starting point and I want to teach you that in this channel and I would be lying to say that you have to have my particular art supply to do it because other quality charcoals and paper would work pretty well um, just make sure the charcoal is very soft and rich in darkness so yeah don't forget to subscribe ring the bell and again the link to the art supply is in the video's description along with the discount code i'll talk to you guys next time cheers